So when we look at these outcomes related to cardiovascular risk, they also translate based on income and real survival. The 1%, both for men and women, have a life expectancy of longevity in the United States, which is much as 10 years or more for men and approximately 10 years for women, such that the lower class of persons who have 1% of income versus the upper class with 1% of the highest income have a real gap in life expectancy. Now, you often hear politicians say that in the United States, despite having one of the most expensive healthcare delivery systems in the world, we have a longevity which is only 16th among developed countries. This may be true, but the real reason for that disparity in longevity are the racial, ethnic, and social determinants of health that I have described. In fact, a person who has means in the United States lives as long and as well as a person in Japan or Western Europe. Let's now look at hypertension. African Americans have a high rate of hypertension when compared to other race ethnicities in the United States. If we use the lower cut point of 130 over 80 from the latest ACCHA guidelines, as many as 60 to 65 percent of adult African American men and women will now be said to be hypertensive. This is not giving people disease. We know from the Lewington analysis that there is a direct, linear and persistent relationship between elevated blood pressure and dying from ischemic heart disease and dying from stroke, such that the higher the blood pressure, starting at about a systolic of 115, the increased risk is seen such that by the time the person has a systolic blood pressure of 130, they have doubled their risk before the arbitrary cut point of 140 over 90. It's important, therefore, to recognize the powerful impact of hypertension, which again is related to diet, stress, obesity, physical inactivity, and where you live, work, and play, and the outcomes related to cardiovascular disease. Now, we know African Americans are aware of hypertension and often will seek treatment, but control of blood pressure across various race ethnicities is less for African Americans, Hispanics of any race, and Asian Americans than for white Americans. This again is a marker for health-seeking behavior, culture, and the social determinants of health. Now, if we look across the landscape at various causes of disease, along with hypertension, diabetes is a powerful component of risk. In fact, persons who have diabetes, while not necessarily being a coronary heart disease risk equivalent, have a marked increased risk for premature heart disease, chronic kidney disease, stroke, and heart failure. Specifically for African Americans, therefore, to control blood pressure, it may take two or more medications in most adults to control their blood pressure. And some data suggests first step, if the blood pressure is 20 millimeters of mercury above the systolic goal with two medications in combination may be necessary. Unfortunately, some of the newest data suggests that the rates of blood pressure control may actually be decreasing in the United States. We certainly don't see the marked increase in hypertension control as we saw in preceding decades. This, along with increasing obesity, increasing diabetes, and access to care, may actually bake in some of the disparities that I previously mentioned on cardiovascular outcomes. African Americans are clearly a high-risk population. When you look at the African-American population, you see the downward trend in cardiovascular death. But the gap with African-Americans having a higher rate of cardiovascular death versus white Americans is now baked in. And unless we do something to address these disparities, they will persist for another decade or two. If we across, look across the population and you want to say what one thing really demonstrates these disparities, I think it's longevity. The difference in survival of whites versus blacks is not driven by a drive-by shooting or the use of drugs. It's mainly driven by poor control of cardiovascular risk factors, specifically for African Americans, hypertension, more diabetes, the same level of lipids, perhaps less use of statins, and the appropriate use of antiplatelet agents. If you look at life expectancy, therefore, black men have the shortest life expectancy. And the longevity of black women is more similar to white men than it is to white women who have a higher life expectancy than black women and white men. 
Across the board, therefore, looking at some of these differences, the difference between hypertension-related death rates is twice as high in African Americans versus whites. Now, one of the questions that comes into play is what about acute myocardial infarction? Is that driven by more lipids? The answer is no. Total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, is similar in blacks and whites. In fact, in some population studies, blacks actually have higher HDL cholesterols and lower triglycerides. Nevertheless, premature heart attacks occur more often in black Americans. Stroke, clearly related to blood pressure, is much higher in blacks. It starts earlier, and there's an increase in mortality related to strokes in this population. Even sudden cardiac death, which is multifactorial in its origin, appears to be higher in blacks versus whites. Diabetes, as I mentioned before, especially in earlier onset diabetes, may not be a true coronary heart disease risk equivalent. But diabetes is higher in African Americans and in Hispanic Americans and may be another factor leading to these disparities. Let's look at chronic kidney disease. We as cardiologists see lots of patients who have CKD. There is an increase in chronic kidney disease and a three to four times increase in end-stage renal disease in African Americans with higher rates of end-stage renal disease in Native American and certain Latino populations. This is important because after a year or so with end-stage renal disease, these patients are declared disabled. And people who work and have income and do well for themselves pay $100,000 to $120,000 per year to take care of people with end-stage renal disease, much of which can be prevented by controlling diabetes and controlling hypertension. Peripheral arterial disease is another factor that comes into play higher in black men and black women with higher rates of amputation. Peripheral arterial disease, to a large extent, is a surrogate for poorly controlled risk factors. Let's visit heart failure. Heart failure across the general population, especially in African Americans, is more determined by poorly controlled hypertension, whereas in heart failure trials, which often enroll mainly whites, coronary disease is the underlying etiology. Nevertheless, if you look at the rates of heart failure with the aging of the population, poorly controlled hypertension, increase in diabetes, it's expected that the rates of heart failure for these populations will continue to increase. In order to control this increased risk of heart failure, we need to identify cardiac risk factors, specifically uncontrolled hypertension, and treat it appropriately and treat it early.